Hello guys, we are in Valley Cruces in North Carolina at the original Mass General Store and this is the most amazing original general store I've ever seen. We just walked through. We're going to be making several videos here because you can't see it all in one video. We're getting ready to go inside and today you're going to get to meet Lisa Cooper. She grew up here. Her mom and dad bought this store in about 1980 and they moved here from Florida and she's going to tell us a story about living upstairs and working here uh, all those years and this is Sherry and she is their storyteller and does their marketing and she's going to be on another video and tell us about the origin story of the Mass General Store and tell us how it started and how it got to the Coopers and then we're also going to talk to Seth who works in the store and he's going to show us a little bit in another video some details about the operating of the store and the different things and I'm excited to hear a story about growing up here she's done been telling us a little bit on the back porch this place is absolutely <laughs> huge it's the most amazing store I've ever seen uh, I can see why that the Mass General Stores grew to what 11 locations now yes they actually have one in Knoxville Tennessee uh, just up the road from where we're from uh, on Gay Street uh, they have another one in Boone that's not far from here so she'll tell us the story about it and we're gonna learn we'll probably have three or four videos here we're gonna be here today and tomorrow so we're getting ready to go in and let Lisa tell us the story Hey John, um, thank you for coming to the Mass Store in Valley Cruces to help share our story. Seth will be sharing more of our story tomorrow, our longtime uh, manager here at the original store. Um, and welcome. So the story starts for us 43 years ago when my parents sold everything we, they had and moved us to the mountains of North Carolina from um, Winter Park, Florida. We lived up in the top of the store for four years while reopening a business that had been closed for several years and it was quite an adventure. I will say I was not the happiest person to be moving here to Valley Cruces, <laughs> North Carolina at that stage. It took me about six months to fall in love with the store and the candy counter and being a part of it. We, I pumped gas, made deli sandwich, rang the register and took care of customers. Um, would not be legal today at the age of 11 to <laughs> be able to have somebody do that. But it has been an amazing journey and a lot of um, slow and natural organic growth to become who we are today. So let me take you inside and show you a little bit more about the history of the Coopers and Mass Store. Tell us about this gas. Is this the pump that you used here? This was the kerosene gas pump. Kerosene, okay. And it wasn't until, I'm going to say, the early 90s that we stopped pumping regular gas out here. Um, our regular gas pumps were over here. Cars would just pull in and um, we still have air. So if your tire goes flat, mm -hmm. we can still take care of you. Um, so is this pump here original to the store? Did they use this at one time? Or is this something y'all brought in? For no, I, I, I think that's original to the store. It hasn't I, been I, right there. But we, ne we never used it. We had other gas pumps to use, but they they tracked down and found the ESO um, sign to put back up after the original one was lost, removed. So this is a big store. Do you know how many square foot that you have on this door with everything? Because there's buildings out back, you have a school out back. And Schoolhouse and all properties uh, combined together would probably be about 11 or 12,000 square feet. I would, I would think so. With all the different rooms, so we, we cram a lot of stuff into to this space. To <laughs> Welcome to my home is <laughs> how we felt when we lived here, and it was funny because my parents' customer service motto is treat people like they're guests in your home. And for the first four years, they were. And one of the things that they wanted to do is find out what the locals wanted out of this store and be a part of the community. And so the first thing that the locals wanted was to get the post office open back up after the stores have the doors are closed and so many many locals get their mail here and it's a prized um, P.O. box to have with its own um, zip code and so bringing it back to the community in October of 1980 was a big prize for them and one of, one of the things that was funny is I was on the outside and my brother was on the inside to figure out the codes to all these boxes I think they paid us 25 cents a box to get the codes for the boxes so it was just a little little child labor <laughs> for us in a family business. Uh, we had fun doing it though. How long had it been shut down the post office? The post office would have been shut down for about three years. And it this is what date are, are these boxes? They look like they're from the 30s, 40s? I think they're from the um, 
early 1900s. Sherry, tomorrow might or be able to next episode might be able okay. to give you a little more information on the, so the PO boxes. I see mail in them, so people can. Yep, I've got mine right there, and um, you know, part of it was uh, the heat for the store was the um, pot belly stove, which you'll see many people come in, and a local comes and has lunch here every day. That. Um, has been a lifetime farmer in the community, but this will be hot and working in the winter time, and you'll see many people sitting down enjoying the checkers. So they um, recruited a local hardware warrior salesman when they opened up the doors to help figure out the value of the hardware and what to sell stuff at. If they sold enough nails, what would the cost to replace them be? And, and so, um, many blessings to have that help come through and help kind of assess the inventory and make recommendations on how to keep it true to a general store. You'll find, you know, a lot of products that we've continued to carry on with the enamelware, cast iron. Um, we sold milk and eggs um, in the beginning and one of the favorites are the drink coolers. Cheer wine is one of the absolute local favorites. So. If you don't mind, I'll jump on and have one. So we've got the back of the store. One of the things that my um, parents wanted to do was stay true to um, the being able to provide food service. So you'll look up at the ceiling up here in this corner, and my mom created a deli in this back area that she would make soups and sandwiches and serve the local communities and the employees. And Christine is our general manager of this store. She's been working with us for about 10 years now, started in Boone and came to the Valley and has grown up and grown with the organization. And um, uh, she may know Santa Claus, so that's a that's a fun fact. How are y'all doing today? Good. <laughs> so when they opened the doors, the inventory and money could only go so far. So. We had the front room opened up, and this was the second room to open up, and we only had about half of this opened up um, because we didn't have the merchandise to fill the whole thing. So it was a natural growth as they sold some sort of product mix, they'd find another, and they continue their path of what do we expand into and what makes sense. So local goods has been a big um, focus with our jams and jellies and stuff in the other room and our uh, grits and all the all the product mixes changed and evolved over the time frame. <laughs> so when you all bought the store, was there still some original merchandise still in the store? There was some original merchandise still in the store, and their goal was to build on it. And one of the things. Um, is understanding the products of the past that make sense and a few little treasures that were some of the first products we carried back in were the rosebud salve and the stories of people that came into the store um, that they used to go door to door selling the rosebud salve and then you got your bag bomb both continued products um, and great selling items. Window Warrior was a locally created product several years back. Um, here we are with Alan Mast, who is a longtime um, historian and <laughs> hysterical treasure of Mast General Store. A lot of family ties to this place, and um, he's got a little something to show you. If you've got chicken to trade in, yep, show you where we kept them. I think that's how. Chickens. Years ago, farmers would raise chickens and bring them down here, and we'd give them credit, and it was known as the barter system. This is where we kept them. Drop them down into a chicken coop. <laughs> 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 
So the story goes that people would bring their chickens down here, trade them, and then they climb under the store and pull them out and take them to the other store and trade them again. So the mother got, granddad down there until they, that happened once, and after that they realized it and then stopped that. They, they figured out how to only let them trade their chickens once, but so what up to, uh, we don't take chickens anymore. I don't think a general store is complete without the old-fashioned toys, and for years it was truly the old-fashioned toys with the sock monkeys and the socks to be able to make the sock monkeys and the department grew over the years because it was all the old Fisher Price toys and the um, silly putty and you know etch a sketch and um, as the years have changed things have gotten a little bit more modern where there's a mixture of we've got the thinking putty where silly putty we still sell as well so um, it's a delight that children will come in and get their play cars and all that sort of stuff and Several years back, we made a decision that some of the uh, newer toys were older toys. The toys that I played with as a kid, the Light Bright, the Simon, um, several items like that. And you know, it'll continue to evolve and change as um, the years pass. So we've got old and new products alike in all of the stores. You. <laughs> So the, the venture into the upstairs, we didn't have um, we didn't have any customers upstairs, but my parents chose to only take a portion of it to make it our home in hopes that we would grow into the space upstairs. So product mix has evolved over the years with the homeward housewares and homewares upstairs and now we've created a little Christmas shop so oh, we, really? we love having a little Christmas story out there and then a pet story and we moved in some rocking chairs where um, we used to have our living room and you know be careful all the floors are creaky and all <laughs> I can't imagine my parents having teenagers on top of a general store in the middle of nowhere raising them in a very tiny space. So this room's quite large, but our bedrooms and life up here started where the steps to the upstairs start. So this was all closed in and you would be walking through our one bathroom right now and into what we had as our kitchen right in here. Our dining room table would sit right in here and this is what the locals knew as the after hours store. The so they would, they, would, they would come up here to get their milk or eggs if the store was closed and they ran out of something. So this is our back deck area. So this is when you was a kid you were still selling milk and eggs here? Yes. They would, you know, it became a community store and if the community was out of sugar, milk, or eggs and they'd call in, we'd meet them at the back door and put it on credit. So well, we took their that. credit. So part of that evolves, this would be our front door to our little cozy apartment right in here. I think I have to get the key. Okay. Looks like they've got. <laughs> oh, there's quite a few rooms up here. Our old bedrooms are now used for storage, and um, it's getting a little hot in here on top of the store. So, yeah, so when you lived here as a kid, there was no air conditioning here. Then. There was no air conditioning here, just the windows in my parents' bedroom, and. Um, my mom, after long hard days, would come into one of our rooms and have a nap because there was no light to, to wake her up. <laughs> so, wow. four years of up here, and my parents talk a little bit about the, their, um, once they could give back, they started giving back to the community, but they started by simply letting an employee stay <laughs> in one of our closets because it's room enough, you'll see with the angles, to put a bed in it when she was having a little homelessness. Have to get up here and do some clean out sometime this next this winter when we're slow. Definitely watch the stairs. So yeah, there's a three. So this building's three stories and then a basement maybe. Yes. N n well, no, it's just under the store. Just under the store. Okay. Just under the store. Well, thank you for letting us come up here. All right. Well, hang on to the guardrail going okay. down. So this is your Christmas department for. Uh, yes, Christmas. we thought. 
Now, Christmas in the mountains is always a wonderful tradition for families during um, starting basically the week before Thanksgiving on through Christmas. Families will come up here, hope for a little snow, go to the tree farms and come by Mass Store and pick up a few treats for the holidays. So it's been a family tradition in this area. So it made a lot of sense for us to jump on into Christmas as a department in here and um, several uh, wonderful buyers enjoyed buying um, Christmas for all the stores and you know, I'll give a shout out to the Grinch is my favorite. <laughs> the, the Grinch, I think this is the reason we have this much Grinch is because I'm like I love the Grinch and um, my favorite phrase in Christmas does not come from a store doesn't seem to be correct. <laughs> <laughs> it should come from Mass General Store, but you know, it's, Christmas is about the spirit of family and traditions and being together and um, being thankful and um, helping others as you can. Beautiful. We love it. Well, let's go see the shoes, boots, and knives. All right. Well, you can see the wire on these steps here. <laughs> you can see. You gotta people... watch your head. <laughs> Yep. I need to schedule a clean out up there. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're still that. we're still recording. <laughs> All right, and one of my um, uh, favorite rooms in the history of this room is we started carrying uh, shoes and boots, and um, the story goes that this is where my uh, dad spent a lot of his time because selling footwear really helped pay the bills and um, he spent a lot of hours in this room and um, got several people here that have been with us quite a while. Hi Rainey and Jim's a, Jim's a fixture in this department. <laughs> I, I'd rather say you were here before I was born and pretend to be younger but I came over on the Mayflower. He came, he came over not long after <laughs> <laughs> we got here and this tends to be all in the family. I uh, got our men's and our most recent change in this facility is opening up a knife shop which um, was a passion of our employees. Uh, they said we, we want to grow the knife department and I started visiting the stores after my a lot more after my children had gotten a little bit older and I go into the store and you would see guys at the knife counter just admiring the knives and therefore women um, also admire knives but they sometimes admire shoes just a little bit more. So um, the part that I love is the guys that help out with the knives. You'll get a glimpse of that tomorrow with Seth or on your next episode with Seth and one of our local favorites is just a couple miles down from here, Winkler. Just a phenomenal person and knife maker. So this was truly a treasure. <laughs> um, they wanted to do a ribbon cutting when we opened this up and I said, well we can't do a ribbon cutting but we can do a knife cutting. So I got to hold a big knife and cut the ribbon <laughs> and uh, welcome this new addition to, to Mass Store. You can see the Mass Knife Shop logo that um, carries through and but yeah, have worked on some print to match it. But this was the room that was the old feed and seed room and when we got the store, opened back up the doors, there were cases of popped open Pepsis and Colas and just a mess if you could imagine shutting the door down and not opening it up for you know, two and a half years. A lot of, a lot of things have changed. and. The uh, desire to try to stay true to the roots of the general store while appealing to um, the modern day customer has been quite a focus and I've loved the way the merchandise has evolved and developed, staying true to some of the core products and continuing to try to find the local knife makers that uh, make a difference. Um, these guys will be able to tell you all about it. but. These right here just came in a while back, or just like a couple weeks ago, and amazing knifemanship. <laughs> back to the product. 
one of our favorite staples for Christmas is our Christmas tube app made just down the road in Mount Airy. Um, so, passion for finding the vendors that you know make sense and adding to our story and supporting the local mix as much as we can. So, you want to go to the back porch? Sure. All right. Now I saw another, what's this other building beside of us? I saw through the windows at the knife. What's over there? That is our River Cross building, which we have now owned that and operated it for 13 years. It is, it was a convenience store that opened up when the original store shut down and another family from Florida came and opened that up as a convenience store. And it was a, a challenge because somebody told them that we weren't going to do gas and groceries when we reopened back up, but that was the intent for us to do as well. So it became a ladies dress shop. Come on through. Oh, you. Slow. <laughs> oh, no hurry. No hurry. We're in valley time. <laughs> so, um, uh, that became one of my best friend's parents, and they opened up a, a wonderful dress shop. And it's called Valley Fashions, and they operated it until their retirement. And we were able to buy the building and open up a entirely made in USA gift shop. Oh, a lot of okay. local artists and talents are in that area or in that store. Well, that's um, something we, we'll try to film on a separate video then. We'll do just one about that. Would that would be great. So everything in there is made in the USA. Everything in there is made in USA. We've tried to um, focus on local as much as possible, but you'll find goods from all over the USA. A lot of local potters and jeweler artists in there and that's just been a nice compliment to the business. We had uh, the Little Red Schoolhouse when we opened back up. There was a potter in there for a while. We tried to make a museum but now it's our clearance center. So pretty much for the most part everything in there is half off so people can get a good deal on some quality merchandise and um, you never know what you're going to get when you walk through that door. Yeah, well I guess Sherry can tell us a little bit about that on her part of the video since uh, she knows a little bit of the history. Uh, so very often on Saturdays you'll see musicians come and play on the back porch. Oh, okay. Which is a wonderful addition. You'll have a, a bunch of people sitting out here having their sodas and moon pies and peanuts and popcorn now. Um, and so it's just, it's been a wonderful venture to see. Um, I always like to speak to when you look, come to the Valley Cruces. I say my parents fell in love with the store first and then the Valley next. And there's a lot of conservation efforts that are group efforts of the Valley to preserve the place as it stands today. So I jokingly say if you see a barn from this place, it's under conservation easement through my parents purchasing and working with the local conservancy, Blue Ridge Conservancy, um, to do that. There's uh, the conference center up the road is a beautiful little drive that'll show you a little more of the conservation efforts in the area. Um, one of our employees in the community also put together Valley Cruces Park, which is behind the annex as a community park. And music in the park on Friday nights now I uh, gather about a thousand people to come in and it's a totally community funded uh, park for this area that people get, gather and meet and play and have fun. Backs up to the river which is always a bonus. So the river brings quite a bit of tourism too to the area for fishing? For fly fishing, rafting, um, kayaking depends on the level of the water that's coming through but a highly sought after fly fishing community here a lot of talented uh, people working in that industry what, what's the name of the river Watauga River Watauga River okay well alrighty well I appreciate the tour through today <laughs> and we're looking forward to talking to everybody else and uh, I'm imagining that uh, you've got a childhood a lot of people dream about growing up in a general store I, I can tell you um, get emotional about it a little bit but uh, so many blessings have come from growing up here being a part of this really seeing the work and effort that my parents put into the growth of this business and also being along for the ride to help and support it but um, the, the story never quite ends as when the pandemic hit we shut down 11 stores and 
the blessings from that are we got them back open. Um, we were the donut hole of retail and we had over 500 employees so um, we just had to kind of close our doors and as you'll find out um, my favorite line on a job description is and other duties as necessary. I was packing and shipping some boxes during the, the, the closed down dark days and figuring out with the team how to get things going and you're only as good as the people you are surrounded by and every store has kind of a family network so it's a family family stores in each community and we take that to heart it's a lot of fun thank you me cry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> somewhere we need to touch on we're an employee-owned company too yes I read about that that uh, we have a, over 250 employee owners in the company and you know the longevity of people that's my favorite it's like how long have you been with us and you know I try to remember but um, we celebrate our anniversaries starting at five years every year at the conference center up the road that I told you about so it's really trying to honor the employees that work with us and what they do That's great. and I'm just I'm blown away that I get to come to work and work with these great people truly a blessing Absolutely. I don't know how I'm gonna retire I don't think I can <laughs>